process of it. Hey. I, I am so sorry. This has been a disaster so far. Um, so we're just we're just gonna go ahead and bring Mike Ross on as quickly as we possibly can. A new phone, because apparently the, the brand new phone can't handle it. Can't it's handle a jackass. It. Yeah, man, that's craziness. I, I'm so sorry. And then we just left the other feet up while we were messing with this one. You know, I can hear. Um, I can hear myself on the other phone. It's weird now. So, but anyways, uh, I'm back. I'm watching it. Um, <laughs> y'all come on back to us now. You're here. Um, sorry about that. That was that was craziness. That was some absolute craziness. Somebody gave us a like. I'm not sure why. I appreciate it though. Maximus. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Maximus, you got to go round everybody back up. Get them back in here. We've got all this. And you see, you gave me shit whenever it fell apart when I was by myself. But it didn't fall apart this bad when I was by myself. It just, it, it... You're the one wanting to use your phone. Because yours kept falling. I was trying to be helpful. You see, this is, this is how I get treated. This is how I get treated. She is immediate. Thank you all. Keep on coming on back in. Now, if it doesn't Maybe. work this time, I'm going to blame Gravedigger. <laughs> so, what we were going to do, as far as he said this one, um, he's, only, he's only on one. There's only one on there. Let's try that one. Yeah, do the other one. I'm trying. It's not my face, Maximus. <laughs> it's your face. Oh my god! 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 Hot oh damn! There oh we are. Finally! Huh. Okay, now I got. Now I got to reset this camera. <laughs> That's fine. You take your time. Get yourself set that back up. Ah, oh, that was. I was mad at this for a second. Um, well, hello, I don't friend. know what's going on. Yeah, Facebook sucks. That's what's going on. Either that or my phone sucks. One of the two. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Brand new phone. Mind boggling. Mind boggling. But anyways, welcome. It is so wonderful to have you on. I have been so excited. I I've been I've clearly. Yes! <laughs> I've been giddy for this one, man. <laughs> um, I, I honestly struggled a little bit at work today because I, I was like, man, Grave Diggers tonight. This is going to be a blast. Um, and it is. <laughs> So cool. Now, before we get into anything to do with anything tonight, number one, perhaps you're a new viewer. Perhaps you've been living under a rock and you don't know. <laughs> who um, but we are here with Mike Ross, Gravedigger himself, Mistress Lorray, who keeps him in line, keeps him. <laughs> I try. On this uh, <laughs> on the straight and narrow as much as possible. And they are both affiliated with Scurry Face. Now, they are, they are Scurry Face rep, and Scurry Face has had a competition going on. And instead of me blabbing on about this, I'm going to let you talk about the competition a little bit, because that's going to lead into the fantasy football spot giveaway that we're going to be doing oh, this evening. Oh, right. You're do, you do uh, that football yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know. We mortals got to do some stuff like that. I know, I know the undead over there. Have moved on past football, but but we enjoy it. Okay, so so you want me to tell them about it then? Yeah, yeah, tell them about tell them okay, about okay. Well, and that that's all right because I love to talk about myself. Yes, he does. <laughs> so 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 I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. All right. So first off, Scurry Face. Scurry Face is a page on Facebook, yep. but more than that, Scurry Face is a philosophy. All right. So. Um, and, and basically there, there's a whole bunch of things that, you know, that they believe in. And basically it all boils down to don't be a dick. That's what it all boils down to. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, they're inclusive, anti-bullying, anti-illicit drugs, you know, things like that. Um, help, help people, you know, keep, uh, do mentoring, all that kind of stuff, whenever you can. So that's, that's what Scurry Face is about. Now, 
inside of that, they have what's called the Scare Actor <laughs> Spectacular. You're you're watching him not appear, no, aren't you? No, I, I just saw Chandra's comment. Thank you, honey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they have the Scare Actor Spectacular, which, and I thought it, it seemed like it was a lot more. It started out with 60 scare actors from across the world, not just the country, but the world. And it was it was like a bracket deal, you know, and it worked down. They had gone by eight at a time, then six at a time, then four at a time, and blah, blah, blah. And it's down to the final two. And the final two would be myself, the gravedigger, and somebody else. No, it's yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Tiggy Tagger. You know, I, I love the girl, too. We love Tiggy Tagger. I voted for her when she was not against me, okay? So I, yeah. I love this girl. She is wonderful. Um, but it is just the final two, and they changed the rules a little bit. Now, in previous ones, they started out, you could vote as much as you wanted, and then they went to that you could vote uh, one vote every 24 hours, and then they went to one vote, or two, well, one vote every 12 hours. Yep. Now, and, and each bit was one week long. Well, this final is two weeks long, but one vote, that's all you get, yep. one vote. So every vote counts very much. All, all you got to do for that is you go out to scurryface.com. That's S C U R R Y F A C E.com. And you scroll down and it takes a moment on some phones for the app, for the little voting thing to load up, but you wait till you see the whole thing. And it talks about scare actor spectacular and you find where it says the grave digger. And you mark that, and then you hit the vote button. Yep. In fact, you guys at home on computers could like open up a new tab and do it right now if you wanted to. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, we we want we want it. We'll we'll. You know what? I'm gonna let James even show you how to do that when he gets around to doing that. How's yeah. that? Very good. Very good. So, I think actually, we could work that out. Do you? Can I use the phone there for a second? Yep. All right. <laughs> now this is the phone that went haywire here just a second ago. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to get off of that because that's the wrong button to click. Um, so here we are, a little Internet Explorer. I'm not sure if they can see that at all. That is probably way too bright. Let's try to turn that screen down just a little bit. Let's see if that's Oops. any better. I that's was actually I was liking better. things as scurry face instead of as myself. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> they won't mind. All right, so as you can see right there, right up top, scurryface.com. This is where you go to make the voting happen. Now, once you're here, you're going to scroll down just a wee little bit. They got some cool stuff going on you can check out I as you scroll. Yeah. But you're eventually going to come to this spot right here. You're going to see this handsome gentleman right here, this Ooh, beautiful look at human him. lady right over here. Now, Pretend that she's not there. Oh, wait, I can't do that. That's, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get here, you're going to scroll down just a teensy, weensy little bit more. Um, and then it's going to get right there to the finals. You're going to see two voting brackets. One for Gravedigger, one for um, <laughs> Tiggy. And, for um, Tiggy Terror. She is a wonderful girl. She works for the Woods of Terror. Uh, I would never, Sweet ever lady. slight that girl at all. She is a wonderful, wonderful scare actor. However, it's her <laughs> versus me, so. Vote, up. For, <laughs> vote for the grave digger. <laughs> vote for the grave digger, absolutely. If she is, we've watched, we've checked out Tea Time with Tiggy um, that she has going on usually on Scurry Face. It's a wonderful, wonderful show that she has going on. Go check her out. Just don't vote for her right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Although once she's you not here, against the grave digger. And this is, this is what I'm looking for. All right, this is what I need. This is your pass to get you into the fantasy football league. Very next. The very next two that send us this screenshot right here. I don't care how you get it to us. No. I don't. The one no, no, you. it's the next screen. It's the next screen. No. Oh, excuse me. No, they they got to hit the vote. vote. After, after they hit vote. I hit just vote did. and then screenshot it. That screenshot. Yes. Yes, that would be the one. My phone just kind of went had nuts out there for a second. It's okay though. But that's what we need. We need the screenshot after you vote. Send us that to send that to us any way, shape, or form. I don't care how you get it to us. Just get it to us. Yeah. First two people to do it, you're in. You're into the fantasy football league. You will be competing for. We just picked a beautiful championship belt 
We can't show it to you yet because we don't have it yet, but it is ordered. It's a very, very cool belt. belt. It'll be all custom engraved. You don't have your that. name on it. If you win, if you win, but you won't, you won't. It's, it's not, you're going to have to compete against me and Trish. And Trish is pretty good at this stuff. Um, she had a pretty good run last year. Um, obviously not on our fantasy football lake because it's first year we're doing it, but she had a pretty good run last year. So anyways, that's how you get into it. Get that proof over to Trish as soon as you possibly can. Oh, Max you. says he already did it, so he can't do it. Um, yes, he can. He's got to get to a different IP address. <laughs> Trish, get to a different, IP, different address. IP addresses don't work this time. Oh, uh, if you're using the same device, it, they're they're not just pulling IP addresses. I think they're pulling MAC addresses or using cookies or something like that. One vote so, apiece. Heard, heard. They're playing no games this time. Now, if you get somebody, Max, if you get somebody else's phone, <laughs> there you go. Screenshot. Yes, yes. Oh. Just I don't care how you get it to us. Just get it to us. If you can search back in your history. And pull that screen back up and get it to us. That's that'll work too, man. Just just try your best to get that over to us in some way, shape, or form. Now that's enough fantasy football. We're gonna talk a little bit more about Scare Actor Spectacular um, mm -hmm. at some point in time down the road here. But before we get into that, we're gonna talk about Gravedigger himself, Mistress Larray herself. And I have always found in my life that it is so much better to start at the beginning. You know, the beginning is always a great place to start. And I think that's where we should start today. The beginning of your interest in horror and the hot community. And Grave Digger, I do apologize, but ladies first. <laughs> uh, the answer to that is actually pretty simple. Um, I was maybe seven, eight years old. Maybe nine. I don't know. Um, my middle brother who's like eight years older than me, was working for one of the uh, radio station haunted houses in Omaha. And one night before he went to work, he took me with him. And he took me in the back and I got to meet everybody. I got to watch him do all the makeup and all the costuming. And I fell in love with it right then and there. That was it for me. Awesome. Awesome. Gravedigger? What? Oh, me? <laughs> Same question. <laughs> what got you involved into the horror industry and haunting in general? <laughs> Sorry? Um, uh, let's see, haunting in general. Um, I used to love to sneak up behind my great grandmother and give her a heart attack. Um, <laughs> let's see, I was like two at that time, I think. Um, let's see, well, actually, into the haunt industry. I mean, I was always a dress up kid. I mean, I, I, anything from being a gorilla to Snoopy. I loved Halloween. Um, I loved chocolate. I loved candy. So I loved Halloween, you know? So, and, and this was when I was a kid, way back when I was, yeah. a kid. um, we had, uh, you know, this is where you go out and you get two pillowcases and you stuff one in your costume. The other one you take around and you can just go as little kids, you can still go out by yourself, didn't you? Your parents, and you went out and you hit as many blocks as you could, and you filled that one up, and you ran it home, and you pulled out the other one, and you went back and you did it again. Yeah, um, <laughs> that was a good time. Uh, now, as far as it, as far as in the haunt industry, it was pretty much the same year, nineteen seventy nine, mm -hmm. and um, I went to uh, I went with some friends to a haunted house. Uh, in Omaha, and it was one of the ones run by the radio stations, as most of them were at that time. And we uh, we went through, and I loved it. And it was, oh, that was so cool, this, that, and the other thing. And I came out, and I said, I want to work here. I want to work here. How? And they're like, well, how old are you? And I said, uh, how old do you have to be to work here? And they said, 16. I said, I'm 16. <laughs> He wasn't. I wasn't. But, you know, they're like, all right, show up tomorrow night. And I did. Now, now my first night was not the greatest experience. Um, <laughs> Let's, talk about, me, Let's talk about it. They put me in the Star Wars room because Star Wars had just come out. Okay. And they had a cantina scene. Um, all right. Now, now remember, back in, back in those days, haunted houses were way different. They weren't this yeah. whole immersive 
and single theme and all that. There are lots of scenes with some, they, they weren't as gory as they are nowadays. Um, a lot of jump scares and cool things to look at. What? She got too excited over there. I'm sorry. Continue. Maximus oh, oh, Maximus right. scored. He's, he's the first entry, and she came unglued for a second. So, uh, congratulations, um, but, Maximus. Back to Grave Digger. <laughs> they, uh, they put me in cantina scene and gave me an alien mask, and I put it on. And somehow I still managed to scare people, so much so that this big, large, dark lady maced me. Right oh, in wow. the mask. Yeah. And oh, I ripped the mask her. off and yelled at her and she ran away. And I wiped the mask <laughs> off and I put the mask back on and I worked for three more hours wearing a mask wow. full of mace. Very cool, man. That's awesome. That's some That's dedication. dedication. But yeah, it, it I... gave me that it gave me that grr. It gave me, you know, having that pain. <laughs> I'm sure I want to kill somebody thing, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't kill somebody that evening. That's that's, yeah. that's important. Well, I um, was like 95 pounds, and you know. Okay, so let's let's talk about that a little bit more. Obviously, had a little bit of the rough rough start there that first night, but after that, what was it like your first year and kind of your initial entry into haunt acting and doing this as a career? It was a blast. It was a blast. Um, I worked several different, over the next couple of years, I worked at every single radio station's haunt. Um, I worked at the television station's haunts. Um, and sometimes it was work at one one night, work at one the next night, work at another one the next night. Whoever would take me because I, I, I loved doing it. Um, my big thing then was my favorite thing. For a while when I was a kid, I was a mannequin model. Those are the people they dress up, put it in the uh, in the picture windows of the store, and you stand there. And every once in a yep. while, you move. So that played yeah. to my that played to my favor because I got to use that in the haunt. Because then you, you you wait until they like hit you and you start to wobble, <laughs> and then you fall at them, you know, and that kind of a thing. Um, but I was hooked. I, I so I continued to do that. Oh my God! I, I I did that every single year until I, f I can't even tell you when. Well, yeah, it was the the late eighties. Um, I got into a relationship with a female that didn't really like Halloween, and I continued to do it anyway, and she didn't like that. And then little so anyway, we'll we'll forget about that because then 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 <laughs> I, I get back up with this one. Now bear in mind. This one and I went out in junior high. Okay, so at, at around that same period of time, right? When okay. we first started doing it. Yeah. We had grown into the same person over the 30 year being away from each other. Uh, she's got bigger boobs, though. Yeah, I, I'm getting <laughs> older, though. Mine are getting bigger, but, you know, she's still got me beat. It's not a competition. Uh, it's not a competition. Yeah. You just need to let me yeah. win. Yeah, okay, I'll let, I'll let you win. I prefer your big boobs over mine. But anyway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nobody likes man boobs. But, you know. Before we jump into the next question, I believe the contest is, is over. We yep. have our two winners. Maximus and Ella. Maximus and Ella are in to the fantasy football. First year ever. You know, that went really, Max really well, didn't it? Like you really what, Max find somebody it? else's phone? <laughs> like like people 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 were into that. I Grave Digger, what do you think? Should we should we should we open it up and give away one more? One more spot? Yeah, sure. I see a couple more people jumped in since we even did that. One more spot is open. This is it. This is it. This is the last spot. I will not give away any more this evening. Last so, opportunity. If you weren't here when he talked about what you got to do, you got to go to Scurry Face. You got to vote for the Grave Digger. And then on the return screen, you got to screenshot that and send it to him. Send so, it over to us. Get it over to Trish. She is watching for it right now. All right. So one more I'm spot. Excited. One more spot is open. All right. Let's see who's going to snag it up. We're going to keep rolling right on down the road, though. Um, so now the Grave Digger character and persona is is definitely um, your your main call to. I think that's what everybody knows you as. Correct. But there was a time when when you weren't the Grave Digger, and and was there a character before Grave Digger? 
that still holds a real special place in your heart? Well, there was one that, like I said, during that relationship when I really couldn't work haunted houses, I did help friends with other haunted houses. One one main friend in particular, who's uh, this this country singer. I don't want to drop names. He, his name's Rowdy Kane, but he. Uh, <laughs> oh, I did that, didn't I? Yeah, okay. you went there. Hey, Rowdy. Let's um, try it out but, I, but what I would do is I would be the host of his little his home haunt that he has. One of those little garage haunt type things, you know. And every year I did, my makeup evolved. Um, but it was always black and white. It was always black and white makeup of some kind. And I, I would change it every year and it evolved each year. The very first year, I kind of looked like the guy from The Cure. And, uh, you know, the, the hair, the way he was and everything. And, and then I, I just, I made it. And, and everybody go, oh, are you Kiss? Uh, no. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I, I kind of based it off Kabuki. You know, the, the kabuki type dancers and stuff like that is what it was based off of. Um, and 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 really, the character of the Gravedigger was fostered in doing that, be, becoming the host, um, do, being the host, being the, the guy that led you through and did all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I worked in the, the, the voice. Now the voice was a lot rougher than this one. So over the years, it, it grew to where it was something I could do for 24 hours constant and not have to worry about it. Sorry, folks. I don't really sound like this all the time, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, no, sorry. The grave digger always sounds like this. It's my other husband that don't sound like that. Right, 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 right. But the man, uh, can they snap in and out a little bit fast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of based off Wolfman Jack because he was a friend of my mom's when I was a kid, too. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so with the evolution of of Gravedigger and, and how did like talk about the original thoughts and what you know kind of you know some of maybe the initial ideas of, of putting together uh, this this persona. <laughs> um, it, what it's evolved into nowadays, because this the, the grave digger we see before us has had quite the transition, has he not? Oh, he has, he has. Um, the 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 very first appearance of the grave digger was at the Sydney Rodeo Parade in 2015. Right, that was our first year of the right. haunt. Yeah, in 2015, <laughs> and he was much darker then. Um, I would much more liken him to Rob Zombie uh, type of a character. Um, And the thoughts of, uh, excuse me, the thoughts of how to put him, you know, what I wanted. One, I wanted it to be easy. I wanted to have pockets so I could carry candy and carry shit, you know. And um, what else? Uh, that was pretty much it. That, that was my criteria. Yeah, <laughs> I had to have pockets, so I I I had the coat. And now, literally, I, I love it when people go, "Oh, I love your costume." I'm like, I just pulled this out of my closet. Literally, I did. Literally, pull this out of my closet. Um, I had the coat. It's like, yeah, this this coat will work. Uh, let's get a white shirt. Let's uh, sacrifice a couple virgins and spread their blood on it. You know, <laughs> yeah. and. Uh, uh, Actually, the, the the first instance of the Grave Digger, I wore trip pants. You know what those are? You know what I trip pants are? T R I P P. Um, the I big baggy know. ones with the chains that hang all over okay. them, big pockets right. everywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm a hip. I'm a hip old man. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have seen that. Oh uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll send you a picture. I love it. I'll send you a picture. Trish has it. She's been over there. You found it, did you? Oh, she's over there hoarding pictures of you, man. That's weird. <laughs> Stalker. Stalker. So, so 2015 is the first appearance of Grave Digger, but it's also a more memorable year for you because you two open up and start Sinister Sydney, right? Yes. That was the first year. Um, let's talk about the initial beginning, um, the very first conversations that we started to have about Sinister Sydney. Who, who, who was the... Uh, who came up with it at first? Who was kind of the first person to, to bring it up? 
actually it was kind of both of us we had just been kind of slowly buying props or a little bit at a time and decorations because we would like to someday maybe think about this well, and our well, our big our big issue is where we live yeah we are middle half, of nowhere we're we're half a mile from the next nearest house pretty much and so we never got trick or treaters but we decorated our porch anyway you know so we started because we could yeah and we and we thought about oh maybe we could do a display or something and get some people down here and then actually one of my co-workers sent me a thing that was in one of the uh swap pages of a gentleman who was selling off a huge collection that he had because his wife decided they didn't like scaring little children anymore and she needed more room for her christmas crap so and and we like scaring little children yeah so. so we bought his collection and we thought you know what we've got enough let's do a one night only event and see what happens okay so that's that's what we did we set it up as a one night extravaganza on halloween night on halloween night because that was a, a saturday night wasn't yep. it? october 31st was a saturday in 2015 and we promoted the hell out of it yes we did and we we went to the we went to the the parades uh sydney um uh, popcorn days down in hamburg we went over to nebraska city for the applejack parade i i made the page for it i made a website i i i boosted you know and all that kind of stuff and we put flyers everywhere everywhere and that one night now this may not sound like a lot for you know for a lot of these people but sinister sydney in sydney iowa by the way okay sydney iowa almost the southwest corner of iowa population about 1100 65 percent of which are over 65 so not in our demographic no we had 275 i think people show up that night yeah that, that very on first halloween night. night which is notoriously a horrible night for haunts right Coming from as far away as Grand Island, Storm Lake, you know, traveling 300 plus miles to get here. So that's, that's awesome. We were wow. blown away. Yeah, we were, we were floored. Away. Absolutely. And we, we got done with that night. We had, when we have 40 people working that night, I think. Maybe somewhere around in there, yeah. And uh, and it was and it was much smaller back then, too. It was, yeah. oh, quarter mile or less than that long we do have five acres that we do this on um it has grown every we've expanded every year so it's about a half mile long now um but we got done that night and we're like i think we can do this yeah and we kept buying more and we kept <laughs> buying more and we kept buying more and, uh, so let's, let's and, talk about the haunt present day a little bit let's say okay. that uh you got a certain individual that has never set foot on Sinister Sydney's property. Um, what can they expect if they come and give you the visit? Well, our most haunts have themes. Um, we don't. Well, we kind of do. We are the only theme that we can really claim to is horror. Because, and phobias. And phobias, because if you're afraid of something, we got it. Trust me, we got it. All right. Um, we work on that. So we, every scene is a scene of its own, it, different from everything else. And you walk from scene to scene, and if this one don't scare you, that one's probably gonna. And okay. it, now we we do have, I want to say running gags. Uh, they're not yeah. really gags, but throughout the things we have some little Easter eggs. Yeah. Uh, which we don't tell anybody, and and I don't know that anybody's ever realized no, it yet. So. But we know about it, and our actors know about it, so they're kind of in, inside jokes to us, yeah. you know, yeah. that run throughout throughout many of the different scenes we've got. I think we're up to thirty eight scenes now. Yeah, and all of it is uh, other than the ones that we want to screw with your eyes. And, and from going from light to dark, light to dark, light to dark, so your eyes aren't focusing well. Most of it is very low lit. And a lot of times, we don't have arrows and signs pointing you which way to go. Um, you're kind of having to just 
trip along through and say, okay, there's a light up there. I think I'll go that way. Yeah. We don't point you in a direction, but we do have actors strategically placed in areas where we know that they might go the wrong way. We'll urge you the right way if you start to get lost. Startle you that way. Yeah. Um, it is an outdoor haunt. Yeah. Uh, 98% of it is outdoor. We have incorporated a couple of the, uh, this again, five acres. We have a hog shed uh, on the property that used to be a very for, old, small, very hog old shed. hog shed. Uh, that was used for raising and butchering the hogs and they had cattle here at a time and there's a hen house and then we did build one building to do kind of a mazy thing in but the rest of it is outdoor so okay. so we don't have the the restrictions that some of those inside buildings do right. where you got to have arrows everywhere pointing which way to, no 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 you get into a scene and then you're you're you know startled you're scared you're whatever and you got to look how the hell do I get out? Where of here? do I go? There's a light in the distance. I'm going that way. And that's the way we like to work it. And because that's it awesome. used to be an old Christmas tree farm, we've got a lot of old, creepy, half dead pines and other trees that we work you through and around. So, yeah, it, it's, it's a little intimidating all by its, even without the actors and all of that stuff at night. It, the property's a little. It's sketchy because the path winds you back and forth and around and around to your loss. And and there's animals out there, you know, it's the woods. So yeah. you might, there might be deer or rabbit or badgers or, and by Coons. the way, Ella, about, about 50 actors now is what we yeah. run on, on, on any given night. That was, I was answering one of Ella's, Ella's questions. Oh, um, very cool. But yeah, it's, it's, it's sketchy out there. I, I have a very bright flashlight off season when I'm out there because you never know what you're going to see. Yeah. And when you put the other crap that we put in there with it, it just, we, we have specific like dead areas where you'll be going along and you're like, there's nothing there. <laughs> we do that on purpose yes. because you don't know if there's anything there or not. And some of those areas, we just have creepy noises being played and, or actors that just run around through the back areas. And, or it might noise. be an animal. You never know. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. And I, I love I love that type of setup. When I think back to um, some different haunted attractions that I've been through, and I haven't had the pleasure uh, of going through years yet. I promise we, we're going to make that drive again. We're, we're going through awesome. it at some point. Um, that's a long but, um, drive, though, man. Oh, man, I don't care. I don't care. We're, we'll be up there at some point. But um, <laughs> probably not this year, but next year. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But anyways. Being lost <laughs> is a little bit of a phobia for me. I don't, I don't like it. If, if I, am, you know, <laughs> you're gonna love us then. <laughs> if, if I know where I'm at, I, I feel can, almost in control of the situation. And when I don't, and then when actors like to tell you to go one way and that's the wrong way, and I'm sure there's plenty of that going on in there. Um, mm. That, that, yeah, that, that's a good effect, and that's an awesome way to scare people and to get inside people's heads. And I, I, I love that. And I, I applaud you for that. It's an awesome mindset well, to have with it. And one of his favorite things used to be, because we have so many hidden back trails that the crew and actors know about, um, he would be able to come out behind you, come out ahead of you, and then be ahead of you again. And he loved doing that to people because they were like, how is this guy getting around this quick? Initially, I could pop up in front of you nine different times throughout the haunt. Cool. Without you knowing I was coming, so That's... yeah, just because we've got good back trails, and unfortunately we don't light them, so you kind of have to be a little careful with them. <laughs> you got to get used to them during the day, I, so you can run through them I at got, night. I did get poked in the eye a few times running through those things. I'll admit it. <laughs> um, is there a, so you look back over all the time. Do you guys have a favorite scene, or, or, or a certain spot of a haunt that maybe you'd be willing to mm. to share a little bit? talk a little bit about well you know me i'm in the ticket booth because i used to be one of those actors who was in your face you know right here and just sneaking up behind you and being right in your ear i can't do that anymore because i've had a couple surgeries on my neck and i've had a surgery on my lower back so i'm in the ticket booth now which i'm kind of really jealous a lot of times of my actors because they get to have all the fun but that first scream of the season that you know isn't one of your actors screaming is just phenomenal okay so 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 we we do have now we live on a highway and th there is another couple that lives in a house on the other <laughs> side of the highway 
Um, <laughs> separation were good, 500 feet apart, whatever. Now, they are a very Christian family, okay? They go to kind of a fundamentalist church. They are not pro-Halloween by any way, shape, or form, but they are very nice, and they are very true Christian-y. You know what and, I mean? They, and they're they, good friends. They, they're good friends. They they. They know what I do. They know it's entertainment. They don't approve of it, but that doesn't stop them. From oh, being they don't approve of, of it, my. What, well, okay, that's what I'm getting to. So, we find out that they enjoy on the weekends in October. They will sit out on their porch <laughs> on the other side, just listening to people scream, and they just they just <laughs> they love it. They can. They've actually figured out where people are in the haunt by the sound of the scream well and i think they've probably figured out which screams are from our actors also right because they hear them most often that's cool, talk man. about that's the bridge cool. talk about the bridge oh <laughs> well talk about the bridge okay okay so between the hog shed oh and yeah because he's here yeah and the next scene there was quite a, you come out of the hog shed and had to go back up and there was a cement mud, thing that was kind of, it was muddy, it was nasty. Well, a good friend of ours had, well, they had bought this house and they had an old wheelchair ramp on it. Well, they threw it in the back of the pickup truck and made his kids sit on the front right up by the cab of it so that he could hold it in uh, because it was wanting to do this so he just sat on the front so well, it would stay up it, it was it was a 20 foot bridge and he's sticking yeah. it into an eight foot bed yeah and mm -hmm. so he brought it over and we put it in between that area to keep from the trip hazards going well the very first time our killer kid brought the the what we call the boy her new boyfriend uh home. not new anymore not new anymore but she child. was two years ago she brought him home during the hot season from college and she is right at the very last scene inside the hog shed. And so she stuck him underneath of that bridge, pounding on the bottom of it as people walked across it. He was the troll. He was our troll. And, and of course, it was <laughs> brand new in there. there. It had been rainy. Uh, it had been muddy as he did it. You know, so people were walking over and, the, and there's slats, there's gaps, the mud's falling on him. And, and he's pounding and more dirt falls. And, and we're like, we're proud of you, honey. We're proud of you for yeah. putting the new boy down there. Well, but he stuck around. Yeah. He and stuck through it. The funniest thing is, the best way I could describe him back then, skittish as a two-year-old colt that had never been touched. I just, the whole thing scared the hell out of him. <laughs> but but he stuck, he stuck it around. out. He stuck it out. They, not just the haunt. We kind of scared the hell out of him, too. But, you know. I can't um, Still do. But he's still uh, around. He, it's like going on, what, two years now? Almost there, two. It'll be two years. He's actually October. here right now because when we go to Crypticon this weekend, he's coming with us to help out, too. So he's a good kid. She could do worse. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, so mm -hmm. when you're not busy scaring the crap out of people, and making them scream, and I know that you all are insanely busy during the hot season, but if there's ever a time where you're able to sneak away from your setup, and go through a haunted attraction yourself. Is there a particular spot you like to go to? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, we have one local, yeah. semi-local, uh, up uh, up at the next big town, which would be Council Bluffs, Omaha area. Um, there's a couple of them up there. Now, we have friends that started one called Madness. It's up in Council Bluffs um, wow. that, we really, that we really enjoy going to. Um, so, because uh, again, a friend is the one who started that. It's another pro haunt up right. there. Now it's way different than what we are. We're not in competition. I don't believe in haunted houses being in competition with each other. You know, there's plenty of nights. So there, everyone is different. Um, so we enjoy going there. We enjoy going to scary acres once in a while, which is over in, in uh, uh, Omaha, which you were speaking of a common friend. Uh, he works there. But I, I, I got to think of two that are fairly recent. Now, the our other chance to go to haunted houses is not during haunt season. It's when we go to this thing called the Midwest Haunters Convention. Yeah, there's there's several conventions that will have a haunt open up for the for one night during those. And a couple of years ago, we went to Haunted Hoochie. 
Hell oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a we're blast. Yeah, we're going this year. We're very excited. Are you, are you, oh, little, you're going to love you're it. Gonna have you're going to love it. Do not wear gloves because the little girl clowns there have really soft hands. Yes. <laughs> and they'll hold your hand. I had one put her sweet little soft, hand, warm hand in mine and walk with me for a little bit. And then I told her to get the guy ahead of us because he was a friend of ours. And yeah, he had no clue that she was behind him anymore. And, and then we went to Hell's Gate this year. Yeah. And that was that was an awesome one. It was long. They had several different types of areas. Um, a lot, lot of detail. Flying people, live animals, things wow. like that. And that was a really good time. My biggest problem, though, with going to other haunts is we don't scare. I mean, we don't. I startle, we're, but I don't we're, scare. We're, we're those people that are saying, come on, could you move over? I want to see this. I want to see if I can copy this type of thing. We also go really slow, so people yeah. keep always yeah. run into us. And so we'll let people go around us because, you know, we, we want to look at stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we want to steal ideas. <laughs> I'm right there with but, you. Regretfully, uh, Trisha are the same way. We don't, it takes, it takes a lot <laughs> to... It takes that. Yeah. Yeah. Most so, haunters don't scare easy at all, and it, it they're like me. They're out to steal ideas. And yeah. I always feel bad for the actors, especially at the big haunts that are with the conventions, because you've got hundreds of these people coming through that don't scare. It's yeah. really hard on the actors to, to keep I up with to, energy. I have to answer this gentleman, this Jonathan gentleman, who, who says we should come see the Tampa Chamber of Terror. Um, Tampa is maybe 23-hour drive for us. We are in the center of the country. I do have friends in that area. Uh, we, we have our uh, motos near Tampa, right? Speaking of clowns and dumbasses. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> be nice to moto. <laughs> He is gonna be the isn't he? Big, big orange dumbass. That's what he is. <laughs> but, uh, He's a good guy. Be nice. I like the little man. <laughs> so do I. I. So does he, and no, he picks on him because gentle. otherwise he'd think he didn't like him anymore. I know. He's a very emotional clown. <laughs> you, can't, you can't mess with him like that. He likes to put on that big tough facade, but he's. He's a softie underneath. He's a pussy. Come on, face it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Before we just destroy poor Moto's whole self-image tonight. Um, <laughs> what's one of your favorite horror movies? From both of you. Favorite horror movie? Um, well, I, I would say The Exorcist, because that was one of my first. But there's there's a movie that I came across called The Butcher Brothers that is an all-around good time. I'd never heard of it. I got done watching it. It's one of those going, what the hell did I just watch? And why didn't I watch it? But you want to see it again. It's one of those kind of things, you know? Okay. All right. Um, mine, just because of circumstances that happened around it. Don't have a dad. Oh, <laughs> we we won't talk about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let that be and just, it's, just go. Yeah, it's a good idea. It, it was a birthday. It was a dark night. You know, was, there was a nice <laughs> storm involved in a hotel. Some cheesecake. PG 13. Yeah. PG 13. <laughs> um. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> we, we always we always ask about. So it seems like a lot of haunts always have some type of backstory about how the place is actually haunted. Or, you know, this, this, this is what happened here. This is what happened there. And we always like to ask people that are involved in these and in these places all the time, have you had any experiences that you would consider quote unquote paranormal at your haunt? And if you have, care to share with us. Well, in the haunt, um... you like big shit. Yeah, um, there are smells that are out in the haunt that are don't not, belong there. We don't produce them. They, they, you know, they, okay. they don't belong. There, there, there are places where we use scents, but now, that's not one of them. Now, again, the 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 property itself, the uh, the house we live in, which is on the property, is 125 years old. Um, the original grocer for this town lived in it and he used to raise that's why there's a hog house and things he used to raise and butcher his own meat and all that kind of stuff now granted this was a hundred plus years ago 
So there would be absolutely no reason for any remnants of smells or anything like that right. to be still be around a hundred years later. And yet down by our gate every once in a while, it'll smell like a pig lot. Yeah. But but for like five minutes and then it's gone. Yeah. It's just <laughs> It's there and then and it's, it's funny because the actual hog shed is quite a ways oh, yeah. away from there. The hog shed's two blocks from there, you know, and 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 it hasn't been used as a hog shed in that long a period of time either. So yeah. Okay. The right. house, on the other hand, is a whole nother story. Yeah. No. The house has a lot going on, but we it's not part of the haunt. Okay. Um, do you have a story from the house you want to share? You don't well, have to. There's the farmer. I think the 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 one that scares off most people the most. Um, it's a residual. Um, it has no idea of us or anything. There is up in our daughter's room two things that happen on a regular. Well, one on a re very regular basis. The other one once in a while. There is an old farmer that will come into the room and get undressed and lay down in the bed where my daughter's sleeping just right on yeah. top of her just but it, it he doesn't know that she's there and you know she's been like this with him a couple times and it it's it, it she's okay with it um she's she's learned that it it's, it's not just an echo it's just an echo in time it's not going to bother her but then there's also what she describes as probably a German shepherd will come in a lot of times at night and curl up at the foot of her bed with her and sleep on her bed with her. That has caused many of her friends never yeah. to sleep in her room again. Pretty much. Wow. Because he's he's kind of a regular thing, whereas the farmer's not really. Um, I would the take the German shepherd over the farmer. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. But yeah, they just... Freaks them out. Freaks them out. Yeah, we got, we got, absolutely. I can understand. We got smells in the stair stairwell. Well, sometimes it'll smell like cookies or flowers or pig shit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it it just it just depends, and they're never. It's like never a long time smell. It's rather short, you know, but it's there. And we've got one corner in our living room that you'll be sitting there watching TV, and you'll see out of your corner of the corner of your eye that it just suddenly gets really dark over there okay you yeah, guys have you know. had quite a bit quite a bit going yeah. on yeah and it's Not all residual there's as far other, as we know other than occasionally the the one that likes to take things and hide them and make you look for them 27 times in the same place it's not there and the that 28th is time, there it is that is annoying we've had stuff show up two years later in the exact spot <laughs> it disappeared from yeah like my earrings from the first yeah, time i spent the yeah. night here disappeared for two years so back showed up. up right in the same room yeah where i'd lost them trish likes to give me a hard time for always losing my car keys um it's kind of like a 10 minute ritual every morning and me running around <laughs> trying to figure out where i put them but i think that's what it is we have a little trickster ghost uh -huh. around here yeah snagging my car keys every night and throwing them somewhere so it's not me being forgetful we have ghosts so thank you Thank you for Christopher that. Presley said, Wow, he didn't mention the dragon. <laughs> I, yes, we have dragons it, it, in the haunt. When we were talking about favorite scenes, we, yeah. we, we ha I like dragons. We got dragons. All We've right. got a tunnel. We've got a, a tunnel with weird lights and fog and dragons that pop out at you. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I like dragons. He likes. Very cool. Very cool. Um, so you guys have somehow squeezing into your very tight schedule uh, a, a talk show um similar uh you know uh called haunt chat live been around yeah. for three years now right yeah we're in our third season um how did haunt chat live come into being <laughs> um i i run this thing uh a group on facebook called haunt chat and it's just a bunch of haunters home haunters pro haunters whatever and we get together. in fact several of them are watching right now right yeah. guys and uh we get together and we chat twice a week and sometimes you know haunt season it's haunt related otherwise i like cake you know it's just it could be anything and and it's just it's just a group of friends but 
we had one of those people was going to be at, I don't remember if it's Midsummer Scream or Scary LA. I think it was one of them out in California. It was one of the ones over in California, and he was going to be there, and he was going to come in to chat while he was there and show us all what was there. And I thought, oh, this would be really cool if I broadcast this so everybody else could see it, you know, a, a walkthrough of this convention going on. And so I made a page for Hunt Chat Live because it was like Hunt Chat and it was being broadcast live. And I set everything up and, and YouTubes and all that kind of stuff. And then I came back to the guys in the group and I said, hey, we're going to do this. And they said, hey, no, we're not. Because what goes on <laughs> in Hunt Chat stays, stays in Hunt Chat. Chat. <sighs> and so I went instant. Uh, now, what the hell do I do with all that stuff I just set up? Because there's a million talk shows out there. There's, yeah. there's a million. Uh, sure. and, and everyone is slightly different. But You're there okay. are a lot of haunt industry shows. Yep. But then I got thinking, I don't even know how many are out there. So I started looking. Wow, there are a lot of them. Hmm. I'll bet you other people don't know how many are out there exactly. either. So what if I did a talk show where I interview the other talk shows to promote them and let people know what all's out there so they know where they can go and what where they can find out more information about all this stuff. Watch out, why have I <laughs> whatever, Christopher. Um and uh I, yeah, she she was chuckling and I had a look at the comments. And so that's how Haunt Chat Live was born. Originally it was just haunt industry shows. Um we've expanded a little bit into horror industry. I've had uh a director, a couple actresses, horror actresses on. Uh, that kind of fit because we do this Crypticon every year down in St. Joe. Mm -hmm. Used to be in Kansas. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me. Used to be in Kansas City. Want me to beat your chest a little bit for you? Yeah. <sighs> yep. Anyway. Don't die. Um, <laughs> and uh, sure. so, so we're adding in the horror. Um, I've just started to add in horror hosts. Those are those guys that dress up funny and have a Saturday night show where they show horror movies and things like that. One of my big inspirations as a kid was our own horror host, Dr. Sanguinary, that he had the Saturday night horror show. And every year for the muscular dystrophy telethon, he would, you know, you, kids would go around and collect money and take it downtown to the fishbowl and get to put the money in his fishbowl, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so he was a huge influence on me. And so, yeah, I started moving into horror host. Maybe we'll get into paranormal sometime down the road. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we just, we, it just keeps growing. We keep having fun. Very cool. Very cool. And it's an awesome program, man. It's really. Oh, thank it, you. It, it's fun to watch. it, too, it, too, is fraught with technical difficulties yes. on a regular <laughs> basis. So do it's not so feel alone. Man. It's so frustrating. And, you know, I, was, I was talking I was on for nine minutes last night or Saturday night before I realized that you couldn't hear us. You could hear the guests, but you couldn't hear us at all. I was talking to Trish, you know, I would, if Facebook would, would, would get it together and, yeah. and like offer, I, I'd be willing to pay for like an awesome Facebook live thing or, or something that, you know, was better than what this, this, it's just loaded with technical issues and limitations and what you can do with it. And it's so frustrating and it makes people turn to other platforms, but then Facebook attacks you for trying to use a different platform and yeah. it, you can't win. You just can't win with it. So hopefully, hopefully and we don't just use more. one other platform. I use three other platforms and then broadcast it to Facebook. Yeah. And it's, it's, you can see, I mean, just, just now, I mean, just us trying to the initial login. We, we both have done yeah. this a hundred times. We both know exactly how to do it. And for whatever reason, it's just, nah, it right. wouldn't do it. the whole thing down, fire it back up, lost half your viewers during all of that. And it's, it's just so frustrating sometimes. But anyways, That's enough, right. enough venting about Facebook. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Howie. <laughs> um, you know, it really grinds my gears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, grinds there you gears. go. Um, so tell us, so you're, you're associated with Heartland Haunters Association as well. Tell us yes, a little bit about yes. that. Uh, Heartland Haunters Association is pretty much, it's a, it's a Facebook group. Um, we're not really, we don't really restrict it to just people in the Heartland, but the purpose of it was 
you have the Northwest Hunters Association. You have the California, Southern California Hunters. You got Northeast Hunters. You got Midwest Hunters, which for some reason, Midwest, they consider like Chicago and down in that area. And that's, to me, that's East. That's not Midwest, but you know, whatever. That's the Midwest area. You got Florida Hunters. You got Texas Hunters. But there wasn't any group that represented North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, you know, they're right Nebraska, down the middle, Iowa. Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri. There was there was no group that did those. And that bothered me, especially since we're in the Iowa, Nebraska area. So we put together the Heartland Haunters Association. Um, right now, uh, again, it's a Facebook group. You can go out there, especially if you're in that the, that area, you know, the heartland, and join it. And it's there for uh, for posting questions, for posting those cool props that you just made. Um, what we're trying to get to do is people in their area to form meet and greets and make and takes, you know, where they all get together and, and, and build something together. Or, or maybe even just all go out to the bar or all go out to a hard house together. You know what I mean? Just go kind of camping, a, something. Go camping, yeah. Uh, just something where for people to get together, to meet other people that are in that same area or close to it, you know, and know that you are not alone. Oh, my God, Dang, you are not alone. It is, uh, there are haunters everywhere. It, it's just, it has blown my mind. I had no idea until I got into the industry. You know, you drive around on Halloween. For those of you who don't do it, drive around on Halloween and you see these yard displays. And you see, you know, people that have, besides those those haunted houses you go to that you pay a lot of money, there are thousands of people who put on haunted houses that don't even cost you anything. And we usually call those charity haunters or home haunters. And those people, place in my heart. Yeah. They go through the same stuff that we go through. They buy all the stuff. They go through all the stresses. They build the stuff. They get actors and all that. They have to store all that stuff. They got to store it. Where do you <laughs> store your shit? Everywhere. Uh, everywhere. But they uh, they got to go through all that. And they don't get money for doing it. They are doing it purely for the love of Halloween. You know, that is, they are the heart of Halloween. Now, we consider ourselves semi-pro because I I still feel like a home haunter, you know? And, and I'll be honest, because of our area, our demographic, whatever, we don't make money at this. We no. lose money every, every year. year. Every year we're losing less money. We're spending more than we're making. Percentage-wise, you know, we're, we're, it's catching up there. One of these days, one of these years, decades, whatever, maybe we'll make some. <laughs> but that's not the point of it. The point of why we do the haunt is because we love Halloween and our actors, our family yes. that come and act at it. Um, mainly they're, they're friends and they're the kids from the high school and the junior high. And I, my grandson works here. He's like 10 years old because you know, little kids are creepy. Yeah, so, especially creepy. him. He's good at it. He's good at it. He enjoys scaring people. But we give them a place to come outside because, okay, I don't know if you've ever heard, don't be a monster. Don't be a monster.org. Wonderful, wonderful organization, anti bullying organization. They okay. use Frankenstein as their spokesman because he wasn't a monster. He was just bullied into becoming one. Yeah. Um, we try and give them a, we try and give those kids a place to go yeah. where and mentor them where they can learn, um, have an outlet for that and not be bullied. You know what I mean? And, and be a family. And we don't care. Okay. We're going slightly beyond the PG-13. I don't care who you pray to. I don't care who you vote for. And I don't care who you fuck. You're still family until you screw up. Okay? Awesome. That's pretty much the way that it is. That's a good so, mentality. Yeah. <laughs> that was only Angelica, Max. What? 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 If they're family, why do you keep them in your dungeon? That was only Angelica. That was only Angelica. And she's she's moved out. She's got a new dungeon to live in. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, so moving on. Um, let's uh, let's talk about conventions. I have. Okay. We've been to we've been to a couple ourselves, but I have not seen anybody, in my eyes, that is hitting the convention scene harder and more often than you two. I keep telling her we're not going to enough of them. <laughs> not. Yeah, we just 
you know, most at first the conventions were because we needed bigger, stuff. better stuff. So we had yeah. our first one was Trans World, yeah. which is the big that thing was overwhelming. That is the big pro <laughs> haunter. <laughs> yeah, it's a trade show, and it's it's one of those things everybody has to go. Now, not anybody can go. You have to own a haunt or work in a pro haunt or something like that. You have to be you, vetted. You have to be accredited. You have to be vetted to get you to get into the thing. Um, so they, cause that's, that's a trade show. It's not one of your cons where people dress up and run around all the time and things like that. It is a place to go and spend money, lots and lots, lots and of money. lots of money. And we did. <laughs> and we did. Yes. So that's what that's for, but you gotta go once. If you can, you gotta go. It really is something to see. But all the other conventions are more about now that we're not buying as much from the big conventions and stuff we're we're going more to of course do the hunt chat live walk arounds walk throughs but it's the people that we know all across the country and canada and everywhere that come to these conventions and like chandra who's watching and jim who's watching and christopher Mads presley and, who's watching and matt's who's watching yeah and uh, we love and you forgot the hobo <laughs> The hobo? <laughs> what hobo? Oh, is oh, Nate watching? I don't think he's watching, but no, yeah. Nate's not watching. But it, it's, it's the people that we know and love in the industry that we, that's the only time we really get to see them because we're all so far apart from each other. But we get together at these conventions and have a blast. Yeah. It's a good time. It really is. Very and and like, yes, we do still buy stuff there. We and, just, we don't buy the like great big said, stuff anymore. And somebody even commented, we're all family. And, and we really are all yeah. family, you know what I mean? And it feels like that, especially when you, you get to chat with them a couple of times a week anyway. Yeah. You know, well, we, we've got several friends up in, up in Canada. We got one in Australia, Mr. Gary Fay of Gary Fay's Creations. I don't know if you've seen the big long finger things that dude with the funny, funny accent has been talking about and posting all over the place. And they're getting bought by Immortal Mask and by, by producers of movies and, yeah, he's a friend of ours down, down yeah. and, and he's actually going to be at HuntCon in Louisiana in New Orleans this coming year in 2020. So we're actually going to get to see him face to face and give hugs and stuff. And Very besides cool. that, we we just love the conventions. Yeah, yeah. We 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 just got to uh, Ohio Halloween and Hunters was was our first one, and it was so much fun. It was wonderful getting to meet you all there and all the other people that we got to meet. If there is ever a convention, if you're watching and you've not been to one, and, and there's one that's going to be around in your area, just just go, just go. You're you're, you're going to have a good time. Um, and, and if if you haven't, man, go check out their 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 Facebook page. They have been to so many of them, and he you guys do such an amazing job at at just the overview of all of it and taking the time to really talk to all the vendors and give them the opportunity to to put their name out there. It's it's phenomenal work, and I love watching you guys do the conventions. You, there, there's in my humble opinion. There's nobody that does them better as far as covering them, and yeah. um, and we, anything we're like gonna that. see more of that this weekend because we'll be at we'll be at Crypticon Kansas City, which is in St. Joe. I know. Let's not go there. Um, I I got I got to make one more response to a little comment I had, yeah, and that was oh, Ch Chandra had said, and they talk about boobs all the time. We don't talk about boobs all the time, but Chandra. Just for you, baby. Just for you. <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, man. Put your clothes back on. Um. Anyways, so do you have do you have a favorite convention to date? One that you look back on that you know, or a particular one that was. I know every one. Question. Every one of them has its own outstanding things. I mean, if yeah. you want big and to see the most people. MHC or Midwest Hunters Convention is the one we do every year. Uh, that's kind of our regular. And then we hit other ones uh, along the way. Uh, Cri or, yeah, Crypticod that we'll be doing next weekend. Yeah. I do that one every year. Now, that's a little different. That's not, it's a con versus a Hunters Convention. It's a horror con. Um, I've been doing that for the last like four years. It falls, it always falls on my birthday, which is next Sunday. By it's the way. a thing, definitely yeah. a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> uh, next Sunday is my birthday. Just hit, hit. I like cake. Um, but yeah, we do that every year. 
no standouts this year we got to go and and max is watching right now and i gotta say it's a standout the ohio halloween and honors convention first year they had it in the mansfield reformatory fantastic uh venue fantastic layout fantastic vendors fantastic volunteers and a whole crap ton of our friends. And a crap ton of our friends, Including too. Including new ones. It was top-notch, and for a first-year haunt, or first-year convention, convention, they hit it out of the ballpark. Yes, they did. So, and I, I think they've actually announced, or they're getting ready to announce this. No, they've already announced it. I couldn't tell you what it is, but but next year's, if you're anywhere near a haunt. Now, we drove 14 hours to get there. Yeah. So, when I say anywhere near, that's 14 hours away. Go to this this Ohio Halloween and Haunters convention. Look it up on Facebook. Get all the information about it. We're, a, we're, they we're, rocked. Yeah, we're going to be there this year. I, I think it's about the same time frame towards the end of May. I'm yeah. not sure on the exact dates, but same location. Um, and we're definitely going to be there. I, I know it's a 14-hour drive for you all. So, so for, you're forgiven if you're not able to make it, but we'd obviously love to see you see you there again, well, man. It's, it's we will be phenomenal. back to it. I don't know about this next year, but we will be back to it. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. And Maximus, if you're still out there watching, man, again, just like you said, killer job, buddy. Pew, pew. Out of the ballpark. <laughs> absolutely. And hi, Cody. Still the, coolest name. still the coolest name out there, Maximus. I love it. Um, oh, I absolutely. Anyway, so we always talk immersive horror with every single guest that we have on. Clearly, I'm wearing the Miasma t-shirt. We're obviously a fan of it. Um, what's your feeling on this, not necessarily new trend, but something that is definitely growing in the haunt world and getting a little bigger, it seems, each and every year? What's what's your feelings on Immersive War and Immersive Terror? You want to say it or me? You know, for people who enjoy that... It's a niche. It, it's a niche. It's awesome. Just not our thing. Hurt. Life is scary enough. I don't need to be immersed into it. I'm I'm more, I, I do it for the entertainment part of it. I do it for the adrenaline part of it. Um, I have, I'm old. I am a recovered addict, so I've been to hell already. Both of us. Yeah. So, so it's not, so I, I, it's not, it's not our thing. I, I, we don't knock it. A lot of people do it. A lot of people love it. Awesome. There's yeah. definitely a niche there, and there's a reason to have it, and they, they are going. They're, they're going places. I love the whole idea of the theater of it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? For for that whole going on and you being part of it. Um, but my body's too old for that crap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I beat up my body too much there for are, that crap. There are haunted theater experiences that aren't quite the he- miasma end of it. You know what I mean? Those... Yeah. I could get into that are where you're maybe kind of become part of it because they incorporate you into it. Yeah. Um, I just don't know. I don't need to be the victim. Yeah. I got you. I got you. And, and we've said it a hundred times. It's, it's not for everybody. We just always yep. like to hear everyone's opinion on it because it, it ranges so broadly. You know, there, there's people that are hundred percent behind it. People are like, ah, no, that's not for me. And um, we always like to like to talk about it for a minute. Um, now, Sinister Sydney, that is, is that is a completely no-touch hunt? That, the hey, state of Iowa. State. The state of Iowa is a no-touch state. You are okay. not allowed, not even with waivers. Okay. How about that? I did not know that. All yeah. right. Well, that answers that so question. that answers your next question of will we ever think about that? Yeah. Now, yeah. now, touching happens. Uh, accidental Accidentally. touching. Those kind of things happen. That's that's not the same deal. you know. But we try very hard to avoid it. Yes. Okay. Um, if big if, but if if Iowa ever did decide to, to, to lift that law, would you consider like a, a one night special? You know, where maybe Sinister Sydney got a little more aggressive. Um, maybe into the touch level of it. Um, I don't know that we would go into the terror level of it. No, no, um, I, no I get that. You know that, like when we went to Haunted Hoochie. Okay, that's a t- touch yeah. on. But it was a fun touch. But it was a fun touch yeah. on. It wasn't, it wasn't a rip your arm out. They call or it Hoochie for a reason. Those girls were Yeah, out. yeah. They were, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
but uh, but it was where they could grab your leg, grab your arm. I'm okay with that. I have no issues with that kind of thing. Again, I don't want to be the victim. You know what I mean? I've been I've been a that. victim plenty of times in real life. I get that. I get that. And I respect that. Um, so we're, we're getting, regretfully, we're coming towards the end here a little bit. But one thing that I did want to talk about a little bit with you, over. Um, Scurry Face. And, yes. and being a rep for Scurry Face, um, number one, why did you choose them as somebody that you would want to align yourselves with? And number two, what does being a scurry face rep, what exactly does that entail? You know, I had the exact same question. Now, first off, I didn't necessarily choose them as somebody I wanted to be aligned with. They requested okay. um, that, that I become a rep uh, because it appeared to them that we followed already our haunt and our show that we followed the same, like I said, the principles behind it. Um, and I asked them the same question. What does that mean? What does being a scurry face rep mean? Do I have to, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? And they're like, no, you don't have to do anything because they don't make you do anything being a rep. Um, they give you a, a little ring to put around your profile picture. If you want to use it, you don't have to. Um, but there, there's nothing that it entails except to follow by the principles that they state. Um, the idea is when you see that ring, when you see the name Scurry Face associated, hopefully you can go, okay, there's somebody who can help me. Okay. It's kind of like wearing a little, well, lack of a, a red cross or whatever, just like any other type of a, a thing. It's just to be out there to, to, when you see that, you say, okay, that person is probably a good person. And they might be able to help with what we need help with, whether that be haunt related uh, or uh, social related or anything like that. Now, we got a lot of people out there. There are a lot of reps. There are state reps. There are haunt reps. Um, there are, uh, yeah, review reps kind of thing. You know, the ones that go out and do the review. Because Scurry Face did start out as a re review site, a haunt review mm -hmm. site. Yeah. And they've just grown. Yes. Still growing. <laughs> and still um, and still growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as you look back, because uh, we're obviously getting to the end of the Scare Actors competition, is there is there a moment when you look back that was maybe one of your favorite moments or, or something that, you know, was very memorable for you? I'm sure there's a hundred. But is there one that sticks out more than others? We seriously didn't think there was any way whatsoever we were going to beat Lucy Lucifer. When we saw her picture explode and go away. I froze and I we cried. We froze, cried, and it was just, we had no idea we were going to be able to beat her. We actually, because Lucy's There's only like, three votes. Lucy, well, first off, I didn't expect to get past the first round. Oh, okay? well, yeah. I'm brand new into the area, and and honestly, the the stigma that the scurry face has gotten over this time is people think it's a clown community. It turns out, it's actually not a clown community. There's lots of haunted actors out there. The clowns just happen to be the ones who like to do the the live feeds, so it kind of yeah. looks like that. Um, but you know, here I was coming into a clown community, not a clown, and so I didn't expect to get past the first round, but they said, hey, you should enter, so, uh, so I entered, and I made it, and I'm like, oh, cool, okay, well, now what? <laughs> well, we go to round two, and then we go to three, and yeah, Cody screamed like a little girl. Yeah. Um, but, like, then you get near the top, and and going into the 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 final four, I was like, holy crap, how, how the hell did I get into the final four? And then we had me and I thought, okay, so it's going to be all four at once. Okay. I'm going to be fourth place and, and this is going to win and, and what have you. And he, they broke it instead of they did head to head. They put me against Lucy Lucifer, who was the, what do they call it in racing? When it's the, the top pick, the, the sure thing, the, you don't know, the favorite, the favorite. Yeah. Lucy, I think was the favorite. And, and they put me up against her and I'm like, all right, well, this is it. It's over. We're done. And so we're sitting there and we're just waiting. And the vote span was three. 
Yeah, that we just... won by three votes. Wow. Now, I expected the votes fan to be a couple hundred, you know, in her mean? favor. In her favor, right? So, so just the I think I cried one because we won, but two because people voted for me. Yeah, it was it was that there were enough people out there to to vote to get me into the final two, and then Mr. Giggles and Tiggy were the second half of that final four. And that was up and up because Giggles, okay, I, I'm not a clown, but Giggles made his way through yeah. all those other clowns yeah. and made it into the finals. And he is a man to be reckoned with. He's a wonderful guy anyway, you know, and uh, and his name's Mike. Yeah, figure. go figure. But, uh, it, um, but you know, they, and so Tiggy ended up being the other one uh, in there doing that. And, and there wasn't a very big spread in, in no, votes there between wasn't. them either. No, theirs was like a 10 or 12 vote spread. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it was. So what this all boils down to is every vote does count, which is why we're asking you, please. Now, I'm not, this time, I'm not going to say vote for me because you may be friends with Tiggy or Lorena Taggart or the other alter ego. And if you want to vote for her, vote for her, but vote. Because every vote counts. No, I'm not proud. I'm gonna. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I'm not proud. I am going to say, please vote for my grave digger. <laughs> please. I would love to see him win this. Even if we don't, we made second place. That is amazing. Yeah. There you go. Um, and I don't mind losing to Tiggy at all. Yeah, she's no, a wonderful lady. I don't mind. Like losing I said, her. I voted for her many times over the so over did the I. rounds. Yeah. You know, and I I have I have to agree with her. Um, I. I love Tea Time with Tiggy, and no disrespect to her in any way, shape, or form. Wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. Well, go vote for Grave Digger. <laughs> Thank you. I, yes, I please. Too. All Good. right, go Do vote it when for the Grave show Digger. Ends. This close, this close, and I am asking each and every single one of you, every person that watches this, go scurryface.com. Vote for and Grave Digger. Even, if, even if it's not tonight, if you're watching it in, in the past, the voting goes through the 20, noon on the Sunday the 21st. Yes. Which yes. is our wedding anniversary. So yes. it would be a great wedding anniversary present. Yes, it would. It would be awesome. Please realize I'm going to be live several times over the next few weeks, and I'm going – you guys are going to be so tired of hearing about this. By the time no, we are. All right, so – so everybody, just vote. Vote Grave Digger. Don't ask questions about it. Just go do it. We gave away all three spots in the Fantasy Football League. The other one went away. I mean, not, not two seconds after we put it up there, somebody snagged up the last spot. And I think we probably got some more votes afterwards of people trying to – just too late. Just too late to the party, but we'll be doing we'll be doing some more. Um, you know, with, with, that, with that being said, I got to interject just a minute because with that being said, I have to say, I don't know of anyone individually who is, I think, who has shown more support for the Grave Digger. Right. Now, we have lots of supporters, yes. lots of love. We love all of you. But I don't know of anyone who has shown more support and put it out there more than the Haunted Honeymooners. Exactly. Both of you. Both love Trish you and it. JC. Huh? Um, <laughs> Letting the cat out, get the out there. This is exposing me like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But who, who have given us more support and more more online support, you know what I mean? And and putting out there, and, and we have to thank you and for, for coming up and spending some time with us. I oh, know you enjoyed came that so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was awesome. It was, it was awesome. great, Just, we, we I think we kind of made lifelong friends here, so you're yeah. stuck with us now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Even after the competition. If you disappear after the competition, I'm coming to kick your ass. <laughs> and and I'm postal, so I'll find you. Yeah. <laughs> um, with that in mind, uh, we're uh, um, now 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 you know what now we're done. Now I'm kicking the show off. We're done now. Um, but no, seriously, <laughs> um, we always like to turn the floor over to the guests um, to to promote your haunt one more time. Give a shout out to maybe anybody you may have forgotten, or, or just any final parting words that you have for everybody watching. Floor's your all. Take us home. I have to do a major, huge shout out to our cast and crew at Sinister Sydney. Um, without them, 
There's no Sinister Sid. And they're volunteers. And they're all volunteers, and they bust their asses for us, and they are family, and I cannot thank them enough. Without them, Sinister Sydney doesn't exist. And yes, that includes you, Cody. Um, he knows but, that. But it also, we a special pulled out shout out to Angelica May. Oh, God, yes. Our, our other daughter, our fourth daughter who has become our actor manager. She showed up just to distress clothing and she has become, <laughs> she, yeah, as a, this, this quiet little mouse and she has become our, our head makeup and our head prop maker and our, our actor, oop, actor manager. <laughs> Sorry. I got, just hit, keep hitting that. Ear, yeah. I, I got cords strung across it. I'm just glad to see it happen to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. just, just for a second. I'm just glad that it's not always us. It's knocking over cameras or whatever it might be. Well, when we have to use the headphones, the cords kind of um, get knocked around because yeah. we're right next I, to I each bought, other. I bought those little wireless earbuds, but they don't work on Facebook Live. As soon as you go into live, they <laughs> shut <laughs> off un until you come back. So, so well, we've, I mean, we've got that. Facebook Live. Yeah. Anyway, shout out to, yes, to all those people. Yes, she is a godsend, Cody. Yes, yeah, she is definitely a godsend. Now, then... Shall I, any more, any more shout out? It's to everybody that supported us. You know, of all of our supporters. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't, we never thought we'd got, we'd get through the first round and, and we're just floored. Well, and um, you can't forget all our, our hot chat supporters because without them, yeah. we wouldn't be hot chat live. Right. All of our friends in hot chat. I mean, there's just, there's too many people to shout out to and i don't want to offend anybody by forgetting them so everybody so just all of you guys you know everybody who's ever voted you know for who you are. or watched us or helped us oh. someone rang <laughs> hi angelica angelica just like oh. you um yeah, yeah we no, were talking about everybody. you you'll have to you'll have to rewind to hear what we said about you <laughs> yeah um, but it's just we couldn't do what we do without everyone that supports us in one way or another so without dragging on too much long, we also have to mention Sinister Sydney is on Facebook, like it, on YouTube, uh, subscribe to it. Now, if you go to, out to the YouTube Sinister Sydney, you will see I do a vlog uh, while we're doing the builds. So it's all behind <laughs> the scenes stuff. Um, There's so many, oh my yeah. God, what are you doing moments on those? Oh yeah, they're, they're hysterical. And uh, so you've got Sinister Sydney, you've got Hot Chat Live. Which, oh, also Sinister Sydney is on Twitter and Instagram and all that other crap. And Sinister Sydney is open Fridays and Saturdays, all of October, weather permitting, because we are an outdoor haunt. Haunt Chat Live, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, that's where all the archives goes out on YouTube. Instagram, Twitter. I think there might even be a Snapchat, not that I use it, but, you know, we got all that out there. He's Mr. Media. The Grave Digger, <laughs> Reverend Michael. You see me commenting on the, uh, you know, in the post over here under that. That's a page you can like that page. Yes. Uh, Michael Ross, I had to make a profile so I can come in and do things like this. A profile that's under not the grave digger because somebody reported me as using a fake name. Um. So yeah. So there's that. If you want to find me, um, actually, uh, I Tom, do have a MySpace page. Have a MySpace yes. Page. <laughs> Because he was in a band called Icky Poo. I was in Icky Poo Music on MySpace.com. <laughs> we are checking that out. 1987 oh, yeah. punk rock. You won't recognize him. You won't recognize him. Icky well, Poo. I, yeah, you won't. yeah, there's a couple pictures. It's mainly just music. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Nope, not on Periscope, Todd. <laughs> and, All right. those, and yes, I used to have a Zanga. Don't have that anymore. <laughs> I had a thing in middle school. Wow. Uh, well, regretfully, that's it. That's it. We, yeah, uh, that's way past it. Isn't this supposed to be an hour show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oops. you know. Oops. <laughs> we, we tend to take over sometimes. We're sorry. Well, hey, man, it's been a great time. Um, and we absolutely, we, we love both of you to death. And uh, again, yeah, absolutely lifelong friends. There's going to be a lot more of this in the future. Um, but for now, for now, we're going to cut it off. We will see you all again Thursday. Um, we'll be doing our usual before we walk into stag, after we walk into stag. You know, hopefully we'll be doing the interview that night. I'm not for sure yet, but we'll find out for soon. But we will definitely see you all again Thursday on our way up to Detroit. 
for now. Thank you all. We got another. We got a review that we got to record right now as well. So good night. Grave Digger, Mistress Lorraine. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Been a blast. Been a blast.